Before we get started today, I just want to remind you that we're in the middle of our annual raffle, and tickets are just $50, and it really helps support all the wonderful work that we're doing. If you buy a ticket today, I'll send you a personal thank you letter and a little gift. It's really easy. Just go to www.ndgraffle.com. That's ndgraffle.com. I'll be ever so grateful to you. Now let's get started. Hi, I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath, and welcome to my Daily Torah Thoughts. Today I want to talk about dividers and unifiers. Dividers are people who look to find the divisions in the world. The divisions amongst people, the division amongst religion, amongst sects. Dividers are people who complain about what's going on, but don't give any solution or any recommendation for how to solve the problem or create a better alternative. Take Korach, for example. He's a great divider. Rashi, the great biblical commentator, explains that he took the people aside. He split the community, and he was a divisive character. If you've studied political science, actually, you don't even have to study it anymore. Just read the headlines. You realize quickly that some people are unifiers that seek to bring people together, and other political leaders are divisive exposing and exploiting fault lines, using wedge issues to splinter unified groups into factions. So as a divider seeks to divide, a unifier seeks to unite. For example, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, the former chief rabbi of the Great Britain, said about the Lubavitcher Rebbe, whose yard site, whose anniversary of his passing we celebrated just a few days ago, he said, as Hitler searched out the Jews in hate, the Rebbe searched out the Jews in love. The Rebbe was a great unifier. Many people know of the Rebbe's great love and vision for the Jewish people, and how each and every Jew was incredibly precious in his eyes. It's that vision and teaching that inspires me every single day. Jews are often divided by cross-section. Where do you belong? How do you affiliate? The Rebbe didn't let those labels define Jews. People came to speak to the Rebbe from all streams of the Jewish spectrum, and non-Jews as well. Some organizations divide between large Jewish communities and small ones. And while there are differences, of course, we can't ignore that the Rebbe sent his shluchim, his rabbis, to all types of communities, large and small. If there were Jews who needed to be served, Chabad will be there. There are Jews who differentiate between levels of learning and levels of scholarship or religious observance, not the Rebbe. The Rebbe treated ordinary, simple Jews the same as he did scholarly rabbis. You see, where Korach divided, the Rebbe united. Where Korach saw and sought cross-section, the Rebbe saw it as an intersection. Where Korach wanted to push us apart, the Rebbe reached out to pull us back together as one people. This unifying approach goes much further than Avat Yisrael, than the love of our fellow. Seeing every Jew as family. You see, this vision of unity, togetherness, and oneness, pervasive throughout the Rebbe's teachings. Chabad can be confusing to people. We're both very spiritual and very practical at the same time. On one hand, we're pretty old-fashioned. Right? Check out the beard. And yet we're also up to date, living with the times. Some of us are even ahead of the curve. We can be non-judgmental, tolerant, and understanding of others, yet quite principled with our own strict standards. We wouldn't be considered feminist, yet Chabad women are the most empowered in the Jewish world today. A lot of Jewish philosophy pits the rationalists against the mystics, but Chabad doesn't see them as mutually exclusive. Many separate Torah learning into compartments of Talmud versus Halacha, Halacha versus mysticism, or the literal meaning versus the figurative meaning, but not the Rebbe, the Rebbe who sees the Torah, and of course life, as one giant interwoven, interconnected, fluid and flowing, organic and holistic whole. Chabad as a teaching emphasizes the power of thought and intent. That's actually what the word Chabad stands for. And yet also declares that 
The physical action is the most important of all. Body versus soul. The youth or the elderly. Seriousness and joy. The Rebbe was once described as an incredibly rational thinker with the faith of a child. I can go on and on about the many paradoxes in Chabad. The Rebbe taught us to embrace the paradox. I think the great dividers of the world would have loved paradoxes as well, but for different reasons. The great dividers would have used paradoxes and contradictions to divide people into factions and to separate ideas into specific compartments. But the Rebbe takes the opposite approach to the paradox. The Rebbe, the great unifier, not only of people, but also of ideas and perspectives, bridging gaps, seeking connections, embracing the paradox, so both can work in unison. Herbert Wiener was a reform rabbi interested in mysticism in the 1950s. He wrote a series of articles for Commentary magazine and later a book called Nine and a Half Mystics. He made numerous visits to the Rebbe and asked many questions. Some of his early private discussions with the Rebbe are recorded in his book, and they're quite amazing. During Rabbi Wiener's time in Crown Heights, he spent time talking with yeshiva students in the sensual Lubavitch study hall. He told the Rebbe that he sensed a certain sincerity and eagerness in their eyes. He thought their eyes looked naive or simple, without inner struggle. The Rebbe told him, what you see in their eyes is a lack of a split or tear. They aren't pulled and torn between two worlds. Indeed, Chabad is comfortable in both worlds. It sees no split, no gap. I think today we have to ask ourselves a very powerful question. Are we unifiers or are we dividers? No matter what the answer is in your mind, the world needs unifiers. We need to be united. The world needs us. I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath. Have a fantastic day.